Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video. Today, I want to talk about XBI, which is a biotech uh, small cap specific ETF. One interesting thing about this ETF is that it's an equally weighted ETF. So it, market caps of the companies within it are not affected. This is very interesting, and I think it more accurately shows the general trends of the sector. Uh, before we get started real quick, I wanted to thank today's video sponsor, um, StockCard.io. So StockCard.io is a really cool uh, tool that helps you find and research stocks. Throughout this video, I'll be using that tool to show you um, the XBI, and uh, I hope that by looking at it and seeing it, you'll be interested in trying it out yourselves. If you decide to subscribe, please use the code BESTOFUS, B-E-S-T-O-F-U-S, Best of Us, um, when you could, as a promo code, uh, to, it'll really help out the channel. With that being said, I'm going to share my screen and we can get started. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. So one thing I want to just talk about real quick also is um, my Twitter. I recently uh, started it and it's free to do for you and it really helps me out. Please go to follow. Um, I try to update it with my general market sentiment um, and keep it up to date with what I'm doing in the world, whether it's a new article I write for Seeking Alpha or a new video coming out on this channel with Carrie. So if you could, please just throw me a follow. It really helps me out. With that being said, let's get started. So again, we're on stockcard.io um, and we're looking at XBI. It, overall, it's not performed well. We can look at it here and, um, well, one day today is not done great. Um, but look at let's look at this this one year, um, 40% down in the last year. And if you look at the high, um, if you look at from the high, it's even more. Uh, it's probably closer to 42, 43%. Um, that's not good. Uh, no stock, you no stock throws do you want to perform that badly. And I think there's a lot of questions as to why that is. Um, I think, among other things, XBI is an incredibly risky stock because it's made up of incredibly risky stocks. So it's made up of mostly companies that do not have any approved drugs. These companies are reliant purely on um, valuations based on ex future expected earnings. And we'll get into that and how the general markets um, and economy has affected those earnings. But these companies are relying on um, drug approvals for to real be, be real big cows and data announcements. So these companies are facing have bad um, drug trials, then they're going to fall, and that's going to affect the the sector as a whole. Um, additionally, again, most of these companies are not profitable. They're more growth companies um, with expected growth or earnings in the future. So if we think about something, what's one big um, headline uh, economic thing that's happened recently? Inflation. We've had record inflation. And what does inflation do? Well, it makes the value of your dollar today and worth less than it was yesterday. And the value of your, your dollar tomorrow worth less or with worth less than it is today. So what's important about that, if we're valuing a company on money they're going to make down the road in the future, then Inflation eats into that, which makes that down the road million dollars be worth a lot less than if the dollar is worth more. So inflation hurts companies that have high growth with uh, expected future earnings. So that's one thing to think about when we look at this rapid fall. Um, another thing to think about is just the general market as a whole. It's really been propped up by a few companies at the top. Many companies have not performed well, especially in the sm smaller companies. And I think this really shows that. Uh, and then finally, we're going to look to try to answer, do we think that is going to keep falling or is it going to go up? Um, so now let, let's look at some of the, the background for this company. Um, right here, you know, they rate it, uh, um, stock card rates it as a reasonable cost, but it rates it as high risk. And I agree with this. This is based around companies that are huge uh, make huge moves up and down on the daily sometimes. Me and these companies are highly shorted, which is why there's uh, lots of pessimism uh, behind this ETF. But 
it's a very high risk field biotech is where a lot of money can be made and a lot of money can be lost. And it's very hard to distinguish what's a winner and what's a loser. So an ETF can help you with that because you're spreading out your risk, but it also can scoop in some companies that you may not want. Overall, this has underperformed the market and that's an understatement. Um, it's significantly underperformed the market and including putting up a really poor performance. And this says it's fairly priced. You know, I think, I think that's good. I think that's accurate. You know, the evaluation of it has really dropped. So we could get in at a good price. So we're going to um, go down past um, these. Again, if you have stock card, you can look into these. Um, they have a great platform that really gives you in-depth details on why they they give each rating they do and the numbers behind it, which I really like. But I want to look at the top holdings. So if we look at the top holdings, we th see things, Arena, um, Biochrist, Biohaven, Emergent, um, many companies. And we can look at these. And one thing, again, this is why I really like StockCard.io. We, we see these companies and we get that quick, um, quick visual on how they're doing. Um, again, most of these companies aren't doing great. We're seeing a lot of red, a lot of yellow. But I mean, let's look into specifically at one of these companies and see how, see how it's doing. Um, Arena, Arena Pharmaceuticals, um, calm investors, high growth potential, um, same returns, overvalued. And I see the analysts, the analysts aren't very high on it. Um, analysts have nine as a hold rating, but they have a very high price target to where we are today. So we can look more at this specifically, but, and you can, with this, you can easily search up um, all the companies in here. But really, when we're looking at an ETF, especially a sector ETF, what we're trying to figure out is what's the general market trend. Um, <clears throat> and what that trend is, we can see right now it's been pretty negative. But the question is, will is this a good price? You know, are we buying the dip? Are we buying it at its low and we're going to have a great return over the next year? Or are we in the beginning of the fall? And I tend to lean that is going to keep falling. Um, no one can accurately predict the market as a whole. And um, it, while it's easier to predict a sector, it's still very difficult. But when I look at the stock, I look at the general economic trends and I don't see those letting up. You know, the Fed is raising rates. Um, so one thing about raising rates is what that does is in general, when the Fed raises rates, what that does is it lowers the stock market as a whole. So right there is something that's working against us. Again, it's um, iffy on you know, how exactly that does it. But in general, when the Fed raises rates, which it said it's going to do, it said it's going to do it, um, as this New York Times article says, faster. I I'm behind a paywall right now, but faster and quicker uh, and more frequently this year than many people expected. Um, this article, I read it earlier, said they expect three interest rate raises, which is a lot in this year alone. So another thing is, how does interest rates affect bonds? And this is why um, raising interest rates, I believe, will hurt uh, biotech. So when, gen when interest rates raise, bond values fall, but bonds pay out a set amount over time. So when the price falls, but you still have the same payout, your yield increases. So a bond can go from paying you know, 3% to 3.5%. And when a bond pays a higher yield, it's more attractive to an investor. So if an investor can get a 3.5% return um, in a bond, then they're less likely to go for a 6 7 8% return in a very risky sector where it's easier to lose money like biotech. So that's why when interest rates rises, investors typically rotate their money into, into safer investments like value companies, dividend companies, and bonds. And they move away from riskier investments because they can have a guaranteed better, easier return um, in these safer investments. Now, when interest rates uh, fall and the yield on a bond falls, if you're only going to make 1% on a bond, then most people want to risk it and try to make some more money. Um, and that's why you see a lot more of money flow into riskier investments 
when, um, when bond yields and dividend yields are very low. So with that, I think that's going to hurt uh, our biotech sector. Because remember, we're in the, the riskier segment because we're in the smaller companies that don't have earnings and aren't these cash kings like big pharma is. Um, and that's very high risk. So I think because of the interest rates, we're going to see people pull money out of the risky biotech sector, continuing to pull it out throughout the year and, and to move it to safer investments. Additionally, um, uh, this, this topic is very highly debated, but what is the, what's going to happen with inflation? Um, so inflation, it hurts companies with future earnings, as we mentioned earlier. And I think inflation is going to maintain a very, uh, a be, maintain a very high percent. Um, and I could be wrong, but if inflation maintains a high percent, it's going to continue hurting the valuation of these companies that are based around future earnings. Now, if inflation all of a sudden goes and falls um, significantly, then that, that trend will be the opposite. Um, lower inflation makes a, a valuation of future cash flow, especially when they're expecting there to be high inflation, um, become more, more, um, more appeasing or more appetizing. So again, how the inflation um, comes, up, um, comes out over the next year and how the interest rates um, end up playing out over the next year, I think will have a significant effect on this um, this ETF, the the last thing that could have an effect, uh, one way or another, but which is much harder to uh, predict, is if the stocks in the ETF have exceptional um, trial results as a whole or exceptionally poor results as a whole. That could uh, move the stock one way or the other. But I think that's much harder to uh, predict. And when you're looking at a sector ETF, you're not trying to specifically necessarily look at one company, especially one that equally weights as companies. You're looking more at how the sector is moving as a whole. And overall, I think that sector has been falling. It's going to continue to fall. Um, thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something that will help you in your investing today. Um, I hope you have a good day. And if you want to reach out to me, reach out to me on my Twitter, direct message me, reach out to me on my Seeking Alpha profile. Thank you and have a good day.